Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Paul Mackay from Analog Wonderland and today we're going to be talking about expired film and a manufacturer famous in the 1900s, as many did, didn't quite survive the digital revolution, but is back in another form and creating films. And it's a fascinating story, so we will spend a little bit of time on history, but we will also cover why you'd shoot expired film, why you'd shoot this one in particular, and what you can expect from the images. Whether you are new to film photography or a long-time analog enthusiast, our channel covers all things film, from tips and tricks, film reviews, to how-to videos. Subscribe now and keep those notifications turned on so that you never miss a beat. Happy shooting! So I'll start with the very basics of expired film. So simply put, all film has an expiry date, but rather than a use by, this is more of a best before date. A couple of things to note. One is that it is a estimation based on the manufacturer's expectations. Things that affect it, how it's stored, well actually that's the main one to be honest, but also the quality of the emulsion. Different films, different types of film, so slide, black and white colour, they all degrade the chemistry within it, degrades at different rates. That rate then also depends how good quality the film is to start with and also whether it's stored in the best conditions, which as we all know is dry, dark and cool, or whether they were kept in a microwave oven <laughs> or somewhere in between. Um, all of these things add up. Now what we have for you today though is we have for you a partnership with our friend Miles who runs Expired Film Club where he specialises in expired film. He also does amazing TikToks and Reels if you want to see him shoot what was it street photography with a Nintendo Game Boy? Um, <laughs> not quite analog but close enough when you see the quality of images but also a load of these kind of films then please do head over here some to sell and things as well and a brilliant club to join but yeah so we've worked with miles to pull together a batch of films that we are relatively sure will be consistent now there's no promises there never can be with expired film but this was all stored safely well and together when we shot sample photos as you'll hopefully see cycle through this video you'll see they have a distinct look but you should be able to get really usable images for Arnia, so this is a Ferrania Solaris film. Let's talk a little bit about the history of this brand and its current incarnation. And then we'll go back to sort of the tips for this emulsion. Film Ferrania is an Italian brand, in fact, the number one Italian film manufacturer for most of the 1900s. They were based in a certain area of Italy and became that town's, that region's main manufacturer, main employee, similar to Kodak in Rochester, the way that Ilford has been in a couple of different places in the UK over the decades. And one of the first times I came across Ferrania was actually in a brilliant book called Revenge of Analog, which I highly recommend you find a copy of and read. There's a whole chapter dedicated to it, and it runs through a whole load of uh, different industries, board games, vinyl, film, and talks about why people still love tangible things and why digital hasn't solved all of the problems that it was promised at the start. And in there, the chap, I think he's called David Sachs, tells the story of Ferrania and also goes to meet some of the folks behind the resurrection, the rebirth of the brand. And it's an incredible story. So this huge factory operation was shut down in the late 90s as it went bankrupt, but effectively was then just left. So until fairly recently, you can you could have visited it and gone around it. In fact, I think Lena Bessanova, the film photographer who does a load of darkroom stuff, really brilliant work, but also has a YouTube channel, Instagram and things like that. She went around it, I think, uh, within the last couple of years. And it's really, really interesting. But what they had to then do was when folks came back and started to try and rebuild production at the site, was they had to do two things. One, bring all of that technology that was available from the large, huge, factories that could produce millions of rolls of film and resize it all into one building that used to be used as the R&D machine. So they'd do small, <laughs> for them at the time, small runs of film to test new things, to practice new products, to do quality checks. Um, they're trying to build that one into the main production line. So it's sort of a tenth of the size. So that's number one. And two, upgrade slash find slash fix all the machinery. And of course, when you think about it, the, the technology at the time, the computer systems, I think Windows 95 was the cutting edge, I'm not sure many other computers had it, floppy disks was the main way of storing computer programs, a huge amount of work to try and bring this brand back to life. But they're doing it. The progress is slow by necessity. They have a load of videos actually that shows some of the things that's going on there and some of the machines that I'm referencing. 
But in 2017, they brought their first batch of Ferrania P30 Alpha to market. That's now Ferrania P30, so it's gone through its testing. It's now a viable product, a genuine new black and white emulsion that we sell in Analog Wonderland whenever we can get our hands on it. And that is very much for them the start of the process. So they are still planning to bring back color film. They have visions of slide film, but of course these things get trickier and trickier as you move through. But it's a wonderful, wonderful brand, a wonderful story. A load of folks will be familiar with Ferrania if you remember or have equipment from the 50s, 60s, 70s in particular. At one point they were bought by 3M, who do a lot of stationary work. You might recognize that brand. And also they did quite a lot of own label work. So I think at one point Boots film was Ferrania. So there we go, a bit more history. And as I say, big recommendation, check out the film Ferrania website now and see what they're up to. And two, Revenge of Analog is a wonderful book <laughs> that, that has a whole chapter. Right, back to the film in particular. So it's 16 exposure, which seems a bit of a strange number now, but again, thinking back to at the time, when film was everything, you had a whole range of exposures. We're used to 24 and 36 now, but 16 was common, 12 was common. Often these were used as either sort of cheap ways for people to try and get into the market or for students to shoot, or they were used as test rolls. So when you had a camera or you wanted to fix something or repair something, often the only way you could really tell was to run a roll of film through it. Similar to with a digital camera, you just, you'd always press the button after you fixed it to see the only thing you could do was shoot a test roll. 16 falls slightly between the standard test of 12 and 24, but I'm sure someone hopefully in the comments will tell me exactly why 16 became a thing. So this is a color negative film, so C41, ISO 200, but it expired a couple of decades ago. And the general rule of thumb, thumb, not fingers, general rule of thumb with expired film is for every decade that it's expired, you overexpose it by a stop. That's generally speaking because the degradation of the chemicals make them less sensitive to light. You have to give it more light to get the same return. General rule of thumb, Miles has tested with this one and says actually it's about right. So it says 200, but please shoot it at ISO 50 if you want to get the best results. If you overexpose it, what people who have shot it and tested it say that you will start to lose a lot of the colors. So it is quite a sensitive film in that regard. It won't give you great exposure latitude. Please don't mess around with it too much unless you want to, unless you want to see what happens. But if you're after that Ferrania look and the Ferrania colors were quite well known for having quite vivid, sort of especially around the nice reds, oranges, not too much of a color shift in general. So we tend to think of Fujifilm as a little cooler, Kodak is a little warmer. It was less of that, but it's a bit more vivid, a bit less subtle, a bit less pastely than those films. Really, really fun, really, really interesting look. If you shoot it at ISO 50 in decent light, I think you'll get absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous results. And it's a really one fun to play with. So if you've never shot expired film, Wonderbox subscribers, this is your chance to shoot a real piece of history History. For those who are experienced, please drop any comments, any tips below for, for the newbies. Personally, I haven't shot a load of expired film. Emma, I know as well, is a bit of a novice to this side of things. So we are really looking forward to our wonder boxes and our rolls of Solaris. I think it's gonna be really, really fun. I love as well, Ferrani's tagline for Solaris was easy photography. <laughs> Job done, <laughs> marketing, tick. If you want any more details, it's FG plus apparently, which I'm guessing again at the time was uh, an important information for those connoisseurs of Solaris. But there we go, some wonderfully last century branding done on word art, a really interesting color film and hopefully a great experience for you. That's it from me for now. Thank you so much. And I will see you again next week.